And we've got this uh, Hornby Turbo Motif. New, uh, oh, I don't know, was it maybe this year, late last year? I can't remember now. Not that long ago, anyway. It's now, what is it now? Uh, uh, late March 2024. And I. I've been collecting quite a lot of locos and some of them I've not haven't run in at all. This was one of them. So I had a running night down at my Model Railway Club in Chesham, Chesham Model Railway Club on their big layout. Put it on the track with my nice and varnished LMS carriages, which you've probably seen in one of my other like videos. And within less than a foot and a half of travel, it didn't just derail, it fell over literally went bonk what the hell is that so i put it back again tried again same thing happened just would not go past the first point in the fiddle yard where they all merge onto the main track well that was no good so uh, i had a feeling what it might have been and hornby after literally decades or a hundred years of experience this is inexcusable it's easy to put right what I found wrong with it, but it shouldn't have happened in the first place. It's a design flaw. And <clears throat> I don't know if I can demonstrate it too easily. But if you look at the um, the bogey, back in the day, they used to attach these bogeys at the back. So they had what they used to drop right down, like right where my fingers are. So they had loads of movement to take up the slightest little, you know, um, misalignment in track or anything but this thing as you can see that is now under gravity that's as far as it goes down and it's absolutely level at track level so any slight lifting up or down and the back wheel or front wheel goes a bit above the track and it's no longer on the track that has to be able to hang below the main driving wheels so it, those wheels should be about oh i don't know at least right there not not there it's not easy to demonstrate this. Uh, I don't know if I can put it on the track. and It's, it's a heavy old beast. I have taken the um, tender off, you might have noticed. I don't want that wanging around because it's hardwired. Well, with that, that little white connector. And it's a heavy beast and all. So I don't want to drop it. Can we show this? If I can hold it and go off the end of the track. Like this and push it along. I'm sure there must be better ways of doing this, like on a bridge or something. When I get to the end here, come on, keep going, keep going, keep going. Get on the track, there you go. Uh, 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 uh. Oh dear. Fiddle, fumble, fumble. Make sure all the driving wheels are on. Now look, that is full, let's get in the middle of the thing, it's fully down. And you see, if you do that, look what happens. The back wheels go up. Do it the other way, the front wheels come off. There is not enough angle to keep so that both wheels under gravity will still be on the track with any misalignment and as soon as you cover like that the front wheels go off the track and of course it then literally just rolls off the track completely so what to do about it well, the first thing to do is get that bit of track out of the way somewhere over there do so with the aid of one of these things Turn it sideways, careful to not to damage the lights because they all light up. And it's very easy to take apart. Right, what can we see? The video may look a bit different. I'm using the um, I'm not using the my normal app that cut well not the app that comes with a camera. This is their posh one, their cinema pro one. For no other reason, I'm trying to get rid of that horrible background hiss you hear in a lot of my videos when I'm very there's no background noises going on like it's silent and the uh, reason for that is uh, this this camera's or phone has a motorized autofocus and the internal micro microphone picks it up the buzzing or the or the rotation of the motor it's constantly zooming in you now trying to focus on whatever it sees in front of the lens so i've got a bluetooth mic mic but the normal photo uh, app the camera app it doesn't support it rather stupid of sony so put that away somewhere oh, put that down there 
put that screw over there and that's all you do you see that that one there that one there see which fits this sort of hammer head shaped oh, there see that one so it's very easy to remove and that's what you've got now some people might say well just bend the bracket down a bit there bend it that point there down a bit and then bend it up a bit there and that might lower it by about a millimeter that's all you need to do you could do that but the trouble is when you do that you shorten it and the wheels will move back a little bit only not a lot but it's not yeah that'd probably be doable and but i'm not going to do that what i'm going to do is move this out of the way all right so take it apart and add a few washers underneath to increase the height what Hornby should do though is, is provide a slightly longer screw as you'll see in a minute so flat bladed screwdriver here take that screw out be very careful what you don't let that spring ping things all over the place all right so we have a screw we have a bracket and then we have what is it? A clear washer plastic washer which goes underneath that banana shaped slot mainly so the spring doesn't get tangled in the slot itself and then a spring very Oop, let go and underneath what they should have done is a hexagonal well hex nut little diddy bump it's 8ba british association which is a funny setup of a uh, metric diameters with an imperial thread form something like that i should know one of my things is nuts and bolts in aerospace but we don't really use ba much anymore so what you've got to do is get yourself two i found that two, i've already done this thing taking it apart put it back together again and so i found out what the problem was even though it's so tricky to hold use a sweat on your fingers or whatever and pick up two 8BA washers two and a half millimeter might do it if you can find such things or two unified that's number two unified washers which are a very similar size basically they mustn't um, go down that hole or well they shouldn't be uh, shouldn't go through there anyway because it's underneath so what do we do then so we put the screw back through here this is fiddly I can tell you put the screw back through there all right now put the I have to lick my finger to do this even tweezers aren't much good at this lick it up put this clear washer see it on the end of my finger I don't know under there plastic washer that's over that then the spring be very careful with that all right and then two of these small washers whoops that didn't work did it so it's falling in there ah i don't like doing this this makes this is what makes it what was in theory is an easy job rather difficult Let's get on there as one so, and another one right now plonk that so the the hammerhead end it's the opposite end of the um the rail whatever those bits are called irons at the front no i don't suppose it matters because it can rotate it round. right now poke it through the hole and hold it thumb on the screw no forefinger on the screw head thumb on the bogey carriage thing little nut bung it in there make sure it goes not like that take it out again obviously it wants to be aligned with a hex not sideways and it keeps going sideways see this is a faff everything i do that these i mean how to get things repaired is a faff because hornby didn't quite do it right there we go now you can see it in there yeah hopefully come on autofocus there you go all right now trick of the trade i found if you just put your thumb over there and try to screw that it won't reach the screw isn't long enough so what you've got to do get a bit of tissue paper 
as in kitchen towel, cut off the corner, see, roll it into a little ball, only small, again lick it or something, damp, you want it squidgy, put it in there, in the, the clamp, it, it pushes it to the bottom of the recess, then carefully turn it over, don't let go of it, and then somehow get your screw in the slot, I hope this is focusing, I don't know what it's focusing on. Focus under that and do it up. This may be slightly blurry. No, I've got to get that in there and push it in. Is that working? No, it's not. Something's happened. Oh, it's come out the hole, isn't it? That's why. Get in there. Get that and ram it down, that's better. Working around the camera with my arms around it doesn't help much. Go on, get in there, go on. Now, oh, that worked. Phew, that's good, isn't it? There we go. I've let go, and there you have it. Now, of course, you just screw it back again. So bring that back. There we go. Having a magnetic screwdriver helps a lot, so it doesn't fall off. Then put that in the hole, the recess bit. So you can just turn this around; that's not a problem. Now, don't you don't need to, to remove that bit, by the way. I did first time; doesn't it? I think that's where a NEM coupling goes. If you want one optional at the front, then do that up. Okay, like that. So it's fiddly, not difficult. Difficulty is in the fiddly business. Right now, where's that bit of track gone? Where do I put it up there? Okay, get rid of these bits and pieces out of the way. <clears throat> now let's plonk it back on the track and we should be able to see what difference that made. Where's that bit out of the way? On the track. I'll try and pick it up now. But not easy. Yeah. Turn it round. Bring it over to the end. Get on there. Come on. on, 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 on. And you can see what this has done. Come on. <sighs> Gravity and fiddliness. All right. There we go. Right, and can we keep it on the track? Slide my hand down, and hopefully that will show that it's just hanging hanging down enough. Is it making any difference? It should be. Yeah, there you go. You can just see that it's that little bit lower. I need to line it with those lines. They're not my match. It's only the with the two washers, but it's enough that some slight little variation. That will stay on the track. Now I've got proof of that because I've done a video in advance of doing this. So I said I've done it once. Oh, is that no? That's probably not convincing. The driving wheels have come off, haven't they? That should ride up there. Bifocal glasses don't help either. There you go. You can see it climbed up. You see that? It's climbing up. See? So you know it's high, and the front's hanging down, and those rear wheels are climbing. So you know they're lower. Yeah, that's a good demonstration, that one. You can see I'm angling the front down. And those rear ones are climbing up slightly. So that should be a reasonable demonstration. It's poorly executed. But I have achieved that little extra bit. There we go. And the spring in, you can see, because of the spring, it stayed on the track. It stays there, even when I do that. That spring's doing its job. So I'll put it down, probably unelegantly. <coughs> It'll fall over the place here. Yeah, greasy fingerprints everywhere. So there you go. That's now done. Uh, there she is. 
which Hornby would still do a better red than that. I'm pretty sure that's not a true crimson lake. It's too dull. It's more maroon than crimson. Anyway, we'll see the result of that in the following video when I actually make the video. Thank you very much. See if she behaves. Select the tracks. All manual this. Yay. Let go through the points. So far, so good. <laughs> yeah, please do. No, can't film it properly then. Bit rate goes away with the place. It's a nice scores class in black. Yeah. You actually go slowly, then it can focus on it better there and see the details. And here she comes, around the corner. Mind up, Bob. Take her along. There you go, it must have been in, isn't it, when it happens. You go the other way. <laughs> Oh, there comes my train again. She only opened the door and went straight up the Anyone's looking with the varnished carriages? I don't think you see it in this light. It's a long way down. Oh, stop. 